All right, look at that. All right, so I had a major issue going live from a scheduled post. Then I tried just going live and nothing was working and then I defaulted to the iPhone and here we are. So um, today I wanna to talk about tongue blocking octaves. And this is a topic that is cool because in the world of playing your like tongue blocking in general, let's say, um, I think I would venture to guess that at least in my experience of all the people I've worked with and, and my own personal experience, um, octaves were the first thing that came out for me in the world of tongue blocking. It wasn't a single note or a tongue slap or flutter. It wasn't any other thing but an octave that came out first. So let's, def let's just define what that is, talk about it, I'll teach you how to get this, and we'll troubleshoot the areas that people are, are mostly having issues with. So an octave is when you play the same note, one octave apart, out of the sides of your mouth. That's how we're getting that. Hello everybody, glad you made it to this um, live stream here. So I've got a C harmonic in my hand, um, I will update the video description to reflect where I'll be this Thursday and Friday in Memphis during the IBC, the International Blues Challenge. I'm going to be doing two Honer Road shows and I'll be playing a little bit um, Thursday night. So check the video description for details on that. So I said that when you play in an octave, you're getting the same two notes out of the side of your mouth. I'm playing one and four blow right now by placing my tongue over holes two and three and covering them completely. And I mentioned that this is the first technique that I ever got in the world of tongue blocking. It was the first thing that came out and, um, you know, from there I realized how important tongue blocking was and how, sorry, <laughs> gee whiz, and how, uh, how much of an impact it could have. So, why would you want to do it? Because this sound is huge, it's full, it makes you sound much bigger than this little tiny instrument. I use them all the time in my playing, you've probably heard them. Uh, they can be produced up and down the entire harmonica. Some of these are out of tune, which is a really good talking point for us. Check this out, I have two C harmonicas. This C harmonica sounds pretty good on the 2-5. This one's a little discordant. So what I'm gonna just share with you quickly is checking your harmonica's tuning, the tuning of your instrument can be accomplished very quickly in the world of octaves. You don't need to play each individual note. You can do a quick check by just going, I hear that that doesn't shimmer. If it's the same note you're hitting, you should get one sound. That one's even better. That's off. That's on. Um, hear how off that is? I chose these intentionally to share with you. If you hear that wavering of the notes, your harmonica is out of tune. So let's talk about how you can get this happening, how you get the, this sound to come out. Uh, again, a C harmonica. There's two big things that will help you get this. Pay attention to how far the harmonica is in your mouth and pay attention to the tongue position, the approach of the harmonica, okay? So if I, if I were to play a tongue block single note, check this out. See how far the harmonica is inside of my mouth? But if I were to play a tongue blocked octave, it's nowhere near as far. I can tongue switch, but I don't use it actively in my playing. And uh, Maybe I can explain what that is for folks wondering what tongue switching is. So, the first thing I said is the is really the angle of approach or what what part of your tongue is touching the harmonica. Think about this. If your if your broadside of your tongue is hitting it and you stick it way in your mouth, 
can't get an octave. Maybe you're getting some of these sounds. Or you are putting your tongue forward, the tip of your tongue, which is the correct position for an octave, but you're still getting Look how far it is in my mouth. It's too far, so watch. Versus So it's not like gramps. You're not going You're going you're creating more of a shape with your mouth to get the octave position. It's the tip of my tongue that's covering two and three with just enough pressure forward to help the tongue, the tip of the tongue spread out and cover holes two and three. So in the world of playing octaves, people refer to octaves and splits. What is the difference between an octave and a split? Well, the octave is the same note, an octave apart like the one and four blow, the three and six blow, one, four draw, etc. cetera. Um, a split is when we are splitting, we're getting two notes out of the side, but they're not an octave. The best example is two, five draw, and it's the most usable split. Pay close attention, to, you know, you do this in front of a mirror so you can gauge, but look at where my lips are. If you like talking about this type of technique and getting like deep into technique talk for, for blues harmonica, join me on the 15th. I'll put a link to that class. I'm doing a harmonica technique class that'll be recorded. You'll have a whole recording that you can download, a video of me going through. It's live, so you can attend live, but I'll go through all of the classic blues harmonica techniques, including what we're doing today, obviously. And then I'll teach you um, a blues riff so you have context to practice it. So, hey, what's up, Dwayne? So you got these octaves starting to come out, hopefully. Tip of the tongue. Let's talk about where they're available and how to use them. Uh, you can find them all over without having to do any special, yes, by the A next, uh, without uh, doing any special uh, changes. In fact, without taking it out of your mouth, you'd want to practice just moving across the blow octaves, one and four, two and five, three and six, and keep going up. Again, we're covering only two holes between the notes that you're hearing. Not the case with the draw. Listen to this. One, four draw, yes. Two, five, we said is a split. It's not an octave. Neither is three, six, and nothing else above. So how do, how do people get these... How do they get those octaves to come out then? Those are three hole covers. So three and seven draw are the octave. Four and eight, five and nine, six and 10. And what happens is you've got to then get go to the grandpa mode. Yeah, everybody do that, all right? You gotta eat it like a sandwich. My lips are actually past the comb. I don't know that they have to be all the way quite that far, but that's the, the comfortable spot for me to play these. Worry about the ones that are the two note covers first. And think about context. These are nothing more than substitutions for um, notes. That's what I'm doing. I'm thinking of a, like a phrase going, All right, so we got this little phrase, this blues riff. Then I just start sub substituting for octaves and splits wherever. You don't necessarily want to convert every note to a, as many as you can. You want to maybe pick a spot. So let's think about it. That 2-5 is real bluesy and it creates a lot of tension, the 2-5 draw. So I, I, I chose to grab 2-5 draw, 1-4 draw, and 1-4 blow. 
versus just it just adds more depth and texture to, to your sound if you're trying to recreate like horn lines and things you would want to think octaves just like juke want a great exercise you want to get really good let's say you're just discovering that you can do this or you've been doing it and you're just discovering the draw octaves let's say up top because that's a different embouchure a different position try to do things like that force the switch of the embouchure don't force it just relax just let it try to come into play <laughs> People are still just finding me. Okay. Um, so yeah, the octaves are a huge part of my playing. They're the first thing that came out for me when I started to try to put my tongue on the harmonica. Um, and again, I think a lot for a lot of people, that's the case when they play. Um, <laughs> Dwayne. Good call, Dwayne. A slow blues in the key of A. So that was an A harp there. I just feel like, again, if you're not using these, you're kind of missing out on a, a great way to make your sound much bigger and give it just a new dimension. So, because to me, when I play, I'm very visual. And, and when I'm playing just single notes, it's a very flat kind of imagery that I see, which is less, provoking it's less uh it doesn't stir up as much emotion for me yeah maybe so maybe that maybe you just start by getting the one four blow somebody says and then you know i say if you can get an octave to come out like one four blow some people it's three six blow it's the same position so really if you're getting one Oh, interesting. So for you, it was the opposite. The tongue, blo the octaves were a stumbling block, but you were you tongue block everything. Yeah, you know, it's um, find find your sweet spot. You know, so when you find the positioning and you start to get an octave, the key is to do something musical with it right away. Otherwise, it's just an effect. It's just a technique that you're not really doing much with. So if it's me, I'm trying to put it into some sort of melody that I already know, maybe, or a blues riff. Ooh. I'm going to answer a question that somebody asked. They said, uh, what's the point in playing like A minor on a C harmonica? Or, which essentially is, and Dan, you can feel free to add to this or change it, but essentially that's asking me, what's the point in playing other position work? Right? You know what I mean? Because you can play in the world of playing um, minor keys, you have choices. There are many minor scales that you could use, different positions to play. Um, and the main advantage to playing, let's say, uh, in the key of A minor on a C, is that is the phrasing changes. And the area of the harmonica that it puts you in, the key of the harmonica will change. Like if you're in A, if, Okay, let's just think about this. You could play that A minor on a G harp and that's third position. 
And you could play it on your C harp, and that's fourth position. The difference between playing two different melodies in different posi or sorry, the same melody in two different positions is that one position might require you to overblow, and you're not an overblower. And you're like, ooh, I just don't want to have to use the overblowing, but I noticed that in fourth position I didn't need it, or vice versa. But also the phrasing and the tonality of that particular key harmonica is going to dictate whether you might play it um, in a, a certain position. Um, yeah, I mean, there was some, I'll give you an example of something that was shown to me by Philip, Philip Jurs, Jurs, who is a great harmonica player who you should follow on YouTube if you don't. He's a great jazz player. And um, he was sharing with me, let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, yeah, like imagine you're in Amazing Grace. Let's see what this would be real quick. In the key of D on an A harmonica, that's 12th position. <laughs> Interesting how the phrasing lays out in 12th position. But when you start playing this in second position, not only are you changing keys if you don't change the harmonica, but the phrasing's totally different. But again, back to the discussion, which is just, that's the reason why you need to figure out how you want, it, how you want it to sound and, and make sure that in the melody or whatever you're gonna do that you don't need overblows based on the position. You might really need that overblow. So if you can overblow, fantastic. You're in good shape. So mo most all of these types of jazz melodies that I'm playing are all learned by ear by watching guys like Philip on YouTube. He, he puts out some great videos. And for me, that's an easy way to learn because I'm an ear player. I learned by ear pretty much my entire learning process. Everything was listening and repeating. Um, but to get a little knowledge of the theory behind it, it helps. It helps so that you can communicate with other people. It's not just about your own personal knowledge. It's about, you know, you might find yourself in a musical situation and you want to, you want to be able to communicate better. So that's something that I'll be working on. That's my, by the way, I'm sharing with you my personal goal moving forward um, is not to become a theory nut, but be really specific about certain types of theory that I can really communicate clearly to other players. That's one of the main advantages. And then what's interesting also is just understanding what you're doing. You're, you're doing things, but you may not fully understand why they work. So, yeah, that's what I got. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. I hope you'll check out the video description. If you're anywhere near Memphis, Thursday and Friday, I'm in town. Um, and then also, I'm doing an online class on February 15th, Harmonica Technique. It's going to be great. Wood comb. Sorry, Dan. Yeah, this is a pear wood. All marine bands are, are pear wood of some sort, meaning that they're either lacquered or not, but it's pear wood. Um... But yeah, I'm looking forward to, to checking out Memphis and seeing a bunch of friends. I know Adam Gusso is going to be there. I know uh, just a bunch of people that I know, a bunch of harmonica friends that I know through going to harmonica conventions and events are going to be there. Uh, it's going to be great. And I'm playing Thursday night at Beale Street Tap Room, I believe it's called, late night around 1130 with the Stage 5 Amps event. So come hang out. Come say hello. Oh, I, no, it's spelled, um, good question. The harmonica player I was referring to, he spells his name F-I-L-I-P, last name J-E-R-S, Philip Jurs. Please subscribe to his channel. If you did, I'll tell you, he's got to be one of my favorite players happening right now. There you go. Thanks for writing that out. You guys have a great day.
I'll, I'll leave you with me with what I do to warm up or practice octaves. See how I'm using, by the way, I want to point something out. This ugly split three draw and six draw. I don't ever hear people using this, but I do use it. I use it in third position primarily as a passing tone like this. You might hear me go. I used it twice there. You see how I can get away with that though? Because it's a passing sound and I'm not hanging out on. Right there, that'd be ugly if I hung out on it any longer than what I did. And then I hit it again after the three six blow. It's a little ugly, it's a little ugly. I like to get ugly with it sometimes, who cares, so what? Sure, I'm sure you can use it in bluegrass somewhere. I don't really play much bluegrass, but it's just a sound. But the, but consider this, in bluegrass, the lines tend to move in and out on a harmonica from what I've heard quickly. So probably less conducive, and you want to sound more like a, a fiddle, perhaps, and so that you'll get more single note runs going on. All right, I'm going to go enjoy this beautiful cloudy day. Thanks for joining me, and I'll be back soon. I'll see ya.